Hello and welcome to Programming the Lazy Way, a sequence of short videos for beginning and not so beginning programmers. I'm Will Briggs, creator of C20 for Lazy Programmers, a new edition out in late 2020 of a textbook that will enable you to do programs like this. Today I want to show you some of the cool things that you can do with the game loop, the loop you'd use for any event driven program, but specifically used here for an arcade game. It would be a good idea to see the previous video on how to do event driven programming uh, first. This is linked to below. Now one of my students was gracious enough to let me use her program, her version of Pac-Man. I am messing up the program to make some points here so the errors are mine, not hers. And here is the program. We have a splash screen that you just saw and we do some initial setup and here is that main game loop game loop like last time. While SSDL is next frame means wait till it's time for the next frame which is going to be a 60th of a second by default but if there's a quit message like clicking the X in the upper right corner of the window then just quit. The other conditions are particular to her program. You end the game if Pac-Man eats all the pellets or dies. We'll call that default event handler mentioned in the previous program. Then we'll display things. We clear the background, we show the maze, we, we put up some text, and then we show the ghost and the Pac-Man. And then let's see, let's go back to that main loop. We're going to move things around, let the ghost move, let the Pac-Man move. We want the ghost to turn blue and start running if Pac-Man eats a pellet. So that's what happens here. But we don't want the ghost to stay on the run forever. So we start at 60. Sorry, that's 240. I wanted 60 frames per second, so that'll give us four seconds for the ghost to remain blue. We count down every frame, and, and when 240 frames have passed, then we'll return ghosts to their normal color and have them start chasing Pac-Man again. So what I want to add is a little indication that the score just went up, a floating 100 that appears whenever there's an encounter between Pac-Man and one of the blue ghosts. So I add it here. We're going to find out where it happened and we're going to print a 100. What do you think? Well, that didn't work. I can't see 100. Did it even get there? Let's put a stop sign there in the debugger so that we'll see that it really goes there. We'll have to do something about the debugger later, I think. Yeah, we did get there. Let's see what happens. Well, let's see. We're going to we're going to print the um, the 100 message and do whatever it is we were doing before. And I guess we'll keep going. See about eating pellets or anything to do with frames. Now we're in the next frame. We go in to display things and the first thing we do is to clear the screen. This erases the 100 and everything else. It's going to then go back and put all the pellets and the ghosts and things back, but it doesn't say anything about putting up the score. The problem is I wasn't thinking in frames. The purpose of this code down here shouldn't be to display something and expect it to stay there because display things is going to display it. The purpose should be to set things up so that display things can then handle everything appropriately. It's sort of like what we get from using functions. Think of a function as having a job and it should do that job and only that job and nobody else does that job. That's efficient in real life as well as in programming, right? So display things should display things. Nobody else gets to. Eat ghost should handle the eating of the ghosts. So what I'll do is I'll set up a variable for where this 100 is supposed to be printed and 
Whenever Pac-Man eats a ghost, we set it to the appropriate location, and then we leave it. Then display things can do its job, but clears the screen. It puts up everything, including the uh, 100. Now I've got it set up so that if the X value of where the score should appear is minus one, then that means that you shouldn't display anything. Finally, when the ghosts stop being blue, then we say, okay, the 100 needs to go away, so we, we set the X to the minus one and make it not show up anymore. Now there's lots more to be done to make this way cooler, of course, but that's the fun of making games. If you like this, please leave comments or likes below on Facebook or YouTube. Make your own SSDL games and, of course, stay lazy.